So what is the biggest lesson that you've learned from uh, your time in service? Helping out other people. You've learned it's how far you can push your body if you need to. Running on no sleep and no food, you can keep going, I promise. So the thing I learned uh, was that the world is actually a very complex place. Uh, you know, when you grow up in a small town, like even Midland is kind of a small town, you know, zoom out. You know, you really just look at a world map. You are a little. You are in a little dot. Like most, probably most of you, your entire world is right on that little dot. And look at all the places in the world that there are to see. There's so many amazing things in the world to go out and see. And then with the politics and the you know, espionage. I mean, there's so much going on in the world that you just really don't have a clue about until you, you know you're put in a situation where you have to know about it. So you know, learning about the world is very interesting. Uh, freedom isn't free. In your service, you learn to improvise on a lot of things. Uh, different cultures, you see different cultures in, uh, that you never would, you would have never witnessed it if you would have never left Michigan. Uh, go across, uh, go across the waters, and there's so much to see, and uh, you see a lot of struggling going on in different countries that you don't see here in the United States. So you see, you see the world as it is. Always oh, remember, freedom isn't free. It was kind of said earlier, but don't sell yourself short. Don't believe you can't achieve. Keep pushing yourself. My entire job sucked. Like everything about it was, was miserable. I, like I loved it. I would never choose a different job because you know it's infantry. <laughs> Best job there is. But um, no, like every every aspect that like when I did get assigned special duties, like everything sucked, but everything also had you know a positive outlook on it. Like I love going into houses and clearing rooms. I don't like the fact that I could get shot. I enjoyed being in the vehicle. They don't like the fact that I've been blown up four times. That sucks. <laughs> but uh, no, I'd say like all around, like it really depends on your outlook on life and how you are with the job. Because every job, yeah, you can be like this sucks so bad, but there's always something worse. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I told this group, but I have 68 jumps out of planes, jets, and helicopters, and I only have three parachutes not open. So, yes, can you have that? You have to know that you're stronger than you think you are. You have to know that no matter where you go, how far you go, you can take one more step. I'll tell you, you got more in you than you think you do. When you think you don't have any more, take another step. And that's what I learned out of the basic, was that I had more in me than I do. Um, but for mine, I, I think it was being a first sergeant for six months, and just, just to give you guys an understanding of what first sergeant is, kind of like Mr. Wenzel here, right, where he only really deals with the negative things with you guys, he doesn't get to experience the joys, um, and that's kind of what it's like being a first sergeant, I thought that this is really what I wanted to do, is getting out ship work, this was awesome, I've been there for so long, I knew lots of things, but that also meant that I was having to help the commander do punishment for my peers. Um, and I don't think at senior NCOs that it's often that we get in trouble, but for some reason in the six months of first sergeant, um, we had two or three, and it was very difficult to have to read them their um, UCMJ right. I've taken four years of friends between my school and college, and then my job, uh, part of my spike line for training, I had to be airborne qualified and then language qualified. So I was sent to special operations language training for the varsity for six months. This is back in 2007, so like I can read Farsi and I can kind of read Arabic, but like, it's just learning how to grow and accept and showing other people that they can do the same thing. So uh, I had taken three years of Spanish, I told the story earlier, I took three years of Spanish in school and it, I was always annoyed by it because I thought, you know, I'm never going to, I'm never going to need to know this. And then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm stationed in Naples, Italy. And so the, knowing the Spanish, because it's a Latin based language, it, and so is Italy, or excuse me, Italian, uh, it was real easy for me to learn Italian. Uh, and then growing up, uh, you know, my grandparents are 100% Armenian, and so I learned a lot of Armenian growing up. The military is a great bridge. You at home right now are living in a very structured environment. Mom and dad tell you where to go, the teachers here tell you what to do. In the military, you're going to have some of that, especially during boot camp. But after that, you're really living somewhat independently. You get four squares or three square meals a day, a place to sleep, and and you're trained to be leaders. Um, you're gonna learn how to be leaders, and you're also gonna have career opportunities when you get back. The biggest thing you learn is that you're capable of things you never dreamt that you were capable of.
remember for the rest of your life. But it was a good experience. It wasn't bad. I didn't have to sleep in a tent, so that was always a good fun. Basic training sucks. <laughs> I didn't get a tent. I slept on the ground. The dirt. There you go. Fire it. <laughs> say for me, one of the one of the things I just didn't like to do um, was every year we had to do a swim call. And for us, I was a crew chief on an amphibious assault vehicle. So what my job was, I had to take 26 grunts or infantry guys, throw them in the back of this thing on a Navy ship. And we'd splash off and I would drive them into shore walls and uh, give them some cover support over their heads while they were trying to storm the beach. But every year our swim call was in full camis, rifles, everything, you had to jump off and swim a mile in. And you, they gave you a life jacket. It was one of these that went around your waist and if you needed it, you pulled it out of the pouch, you put it over your head, but you didn't use it or you never heard the end of it. So yeah, swimming in every year that was cold. It was a long swim. What's the highest rank that you've achieved uh, while being in the military? What rank did you uh, achieve while being in the service? Uh, specialist for the pilot. I'm a staff sergeant. Uh, currently, I just picked up my sergeant. So the highest rank I got when I was in for four years was a petty officer third class. Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant E5. And I was a lieutenant colonel. So, a lot of dudes in one small room fighting the same thing. Got his stomach so bad. So, so bad. Um, As company commander, I wanted to do every job in my company. And that included being a tunnel rat. Now, a tunnel rat is a small person of stature, and they go down into these Vietnamese tunnels. These tunnels have offshoots on them, and they're heavily mined, and anybody at the end of the tunnel, a side shot, can just stick their hand with a weapon into the tunnel, fire down the weapon, and you're, you're dead. The next thing I know, the drill instructors were these, like, they call them smoky bear, big hat, big brim. That brim was bouncing off my nose, and spit was flying in my face as he was yelling at me, and I felt about like this big. We all we all have different paths of how we got here, okay? That's important. But all your stories are unique, individual, and different. Embrace it. But then there's always tomorrow, and it will teach you that, that you can survive that hard day, that hard week, that hard month, that hard year. You'll be able to carry on.